Hello, and welcome to Content Cathedral. This lecture is capturing the cosmos. You'll find this lecture on our website under Story Developer Number One, Capturing the Cosmos. On the internet, I'm known as C. Alex Smith because I have a name that's a little too common to have its own URL. But you all can call me Sherry. Today is the start of a new series of webcasts. What I'm doing is inviting you into my head as I begin a new project. What I'll be doing is developing a story from the very beginning, and I'm inviting you to write along with me. This is sort of like a parallel writing project. If you're already working on something, that's just fine. You can jump in any time if we catch up to where you are with your project. Or you can just take down the information. Before we get into how to develop a story, though, I'd like to take a few seconds and talk about educational anarchy. Then we'll take a moment and talk about where inspiration comes from. And finally, we'll get down to a writing exercise that we'll do together. You'll need a pen or pencil and a piece of regular paper. I'm not picky about the kind of paper or the type of writing utensil. You'll also need a subject to think about. This could be just about anything. A potential character, a setting, a question you have about your manuscript, theme, general thoughts, or curiosities. So be thinking about what you want to examine further in the back of your mind as you watch the rest of this presentation. First, a very little about myself. I travel around the Pacific Northwest for work. I'm not a published author or a professional editor. I'm a physician who is writing just like you, so feel free to take everything that I say with a grain of salt. Being nobody does have some advantages, though. Unlike an agent, I'm very approachable. Unlike an editor, I'm not going to charge you anything for my advice. Since I'm nobody special, you can feel free to disagree with me and just take what works and ignore what doesn't and don't feel like you're doing something wrong or missing out. Also, feel free to add your own two cents, since you're as much of somebody as I am. We've all been in critique groups where nobody is more experienced than anyone else and nobody is particularly in charge, yet we all learn from each other at critique groups. I picture this group similarly. Occasionally I will put up lectures or webcasts as my time allows, but any of you can also put up your own webinars or lectures or blog posts. Mary Patrick's already put up a blog post and you should check it out. It's a book review. I'll also try and do what I call office hours where I open up a window and allow you to come by and ask me questions in real time. Write-ins are another popular thing we could do with this technology. Write-ins are popular during NaNoWriMo, where many people get together and write together for 45 minutes and then take a little social break and then sit down and write for another 45 minutes. That gets a lot of words done in a short period of time. But I want you to feel like this is your site too and that you can announce activities or be creative or think of new things and execute them. If there's something you really want to do but can't figure out how, let me know and I'll try and problem solve with you. let's talk about writing, specifically about creativity. From a purely scientific perspective, we honestly don't know where consciousness comes from, let alone creativity. There are some logistical problems with most of the theories about consciousness. The prevailing theory speculates that free will is an illusion and we are a bundle of complex reflexes. I really don't know that I can buy into that theory. On the other side of the spectrum are a thin fringe of scientists who think consciousness is actually a natural force, kind of like gravity, and that we tap into it so rapidly that we feel like it's a fluid thought, kind of like tuning into a radio station. I must admit, when I'm in the writing zone, that's sort of what it feels like. But whether you think inspiration comes from deep within the mind 
or from somewhere outside, pretty much everyone agrees that it has something to do with the deep subconscious. The conscious mind is very comforted by the familiar and by patterns and is unlikely to come up with anything original. In fact, it really doesn't like new stuff. The conscious mind actively suppresses the subconscious for this reason and keeps our best ideas in the dark. So somehow we must find a way to distract the conscious mind and let the subconscious mind have a brief moment to have its say. There are a lot of resources for tricking the conscious mind and for allowing the subconscious to engage us for just a few seconds, just long enough to capture a new idea. Some of the books that I've found helpful are Writing Open the Mind by Andy Cortier, Burn Wild by Christy Krug, and, oddly enough, Plot and Structure by James Scott Bell. Today, however, I'm going to do an exercise that comes from Writing Open the Mind. It's one of my favorite exercises, and it almost never fails to give me something I can use. This is the first exercise in Writing Open the Mind, and it's called the Cobbling Exercise. However, do not think that this is the only thing of use in this book. This book is chocked full of wonderful things, and I highly recommend that you buy a copy. Okay, so now is when you will need the pen and paper and the subject that you want to investigate more deeply. Take the piece of paper and turn it sideways, or what's called landscape view, on your computer. At the top of the paper, put these headings, people, concepts, places, questions, and emotions. I usually take about seven minutes on a timer and fill in the categories as fast as I can. The important thing here is to keep your hand moving. Don't think. If you have to write a shopping list in order not to think, that's fine. Go ahead and write it in what it, whatever category you see fit. The categories help jumpstart your mind, but they aren't solid categories. Put whatever feels right in any particular category. All right, so now set your timer for seven minutes. I'll come back at that point and we'll continue with this exercise. Okay, are you ready to resume the exercise? I hope you got some really good stuff under those categories. Now you're going to look at your columns with kind of unfocused eyes and just randomly circle seven of the items. Don't think too much about this. Now, go for a walk. Just turn off the recording and go for a walk. 20, 25 minutes, or you can just put this away and do it tomorrow. But give your brain time to think. When you come back, set the timer for 20 minutes. And this time what you're going to do is take the first item that you circled, write about that item. Again, write as fast as you can. Don't let your hand come away from the paper or your fingers away from the keyboard. When you run out of steam on that one item, then move on to the next item and write again for as fast as you can. One of the things I've used to encourage me to write as fast as I can in one of these exercises is a program called Write or Die by Dr. Wicked. I will put a link in the show notes if you'd like to engage this program. But the basic thing that it does is alert if you stop writing. It either beeps at you or makes some other obnoxious sound or flashes red so that it reminds you to keep going. When you're done with your 20 minutes of writing, put the pieces of paper aside for a few minutes or overnight. Then come back to them and read them and highlight the good stuff. I almost always find something, an idea, a really interesting turn of phrase, something that I can use from this exercise. If you do come up with something really interesting, please feel free to put it in the show notes. 
I've made an addition to our web page. In addition to this webcast, I've also put a page specifically for brainstorming. So here's our blog site, and here's our new page. It's called Brainstorming. And when you hit that, you come to New Page that has a quote from James Scott Bell and some good advice about brainstorming in general, but then has this interesting random number generator here. Now right now I have 45 exercises that you can do listed on this table down here. So you want to put in here 45 and it will generate a number for you. The number is 7 right now. So if we come down to 7, we get Watch It, which is the first thing in the morning. Ask yourself, what do you really want to write about in this moment? And then list three things that come to mind. Close your eyes and let your mind show you a movie. Sit back and watch. Don't try to control it. Start writing. Don't think about the plot. Keep writing for 20 minutes. Repeat every day for five days. Take a day off and then highlight the parts that turn you on. So as you can see, I have several different exercises all like that, but I have some blank exercises down here that you can fill in if you come up with some unique and interesting ways to contact the subconscious that work for you. The homework for the next edition of this show is to bring at least three or four of your favorite ideas that you've de developed using some of these exercises or the one that we did today to the next broadcast. Look for announcements in your email or at the calendar on Content Cathedral for the next date. You want to keep track of your writing in order to do this. And one of the things that I think works really well for me is technology called Evernote. Let me show you my Evernote screen and how I use it. Okay, so here is my Evernote screen. And you can see I have a list of files. Actually, these are stacks of files over here. You can open them up and they have notebooks inside with how many files are in each notebook. But that's not really the magic behind Evernote. The big magic is that you can get to your files from just about anywhere. There's an iPhone app, there's um, you can use it on Mac, on your regular computer, you can use it on your computer at work because all of these files are stored in the cloud on Evernote. Now, with brainstorming, what I do is save all of my files in a tag that's called brainstorming. You can save files in almost any notebook. So here, if I want to look at this file about Kurt Monaghan's quote, about good writing, I've saved that in an analysis of writing, in quotes, in short story, in writer, in writer's life, and in Kurt Vonnegut. That means that this one page is in all of those files, and if I do a search for any one of these subjects, this page will come up in the search, along with several other pages. This allows you to mix and match your information in new and creative ways. It's also very easy to brainstorm. When it's time for me to brainstorm, I take a look at my brainstorming file and just run down through it and see what catches my eye. All of these different files, they might have a little something in them that I've developed a little ways or they may have just a phrase in them. Just a single thought that I was thinking at one point. When I schedule my time for brainstorming, I look down this list and see what speaks to me, and I can go 
after that one idea and develop it a little bit further. I can also add ideas together or I can search ideas for any ideas that say, let's say short story. And I have like four of them. Another thing you can do with Evernote is you can certainly write a new note or you can write with a pen if you're on a tablet, but you can also write an audio note. This works for me because I come up with ideas when I'm half asleep. So I can just pull up my iPhone, record an audio note, file it in brainstorming, and later on I can write it out when, I'm, when I have my eyes open and focused again and my glasses on. Evernote is also great for research. If you're on the web and there's something that you want to remember, you can download an icon for most browsers called the Web Clipper. Pushing on this icon brings up this menu where you can either save the article, simplify the article where all pictures and background and colors go out of it, and you just get the words. You can take the whole web page, or you can just take a bookmark. Like you want to come back to this, but you don't want to read what's on the screen. You can also do a screenshot. So you just want, with me, if you just wanted that part. And you can annotate that screenshot. Like that's important. You can do that. Uh, you can type some stuff on it. Now you can save that in one of your folders and you can add tags to it, like important. and save it. And now when you come back to your page and you sync so that it's downloading all of your new notes from the internet, from your cloud, and there's your new note that we made. There it is, there's the arrow, there's the hello that I put on it, and there's the box of the note that I made. Evernote for free. There's a basic plan right here. And you can do all these things with it. It'll t explain the program a little bit further. I will be putting a link to Evernote in the show notes for this episode. And that's all for right now. Next time, we're going to take the ideas that you developed over the next week and we're going to test them to see if they would make a good story idea. We're also going to decide what the elements of your story are and I will be giving you a template to help you develop the story further. Now, I'm a big fan of Scrivener. So I'm going to be giving you a Scrivener template as well as putting the template into Word format. And this is what my Scrivener template looks like. This is the introductory page actually, but it has space for various ideas and then a developer that you go through one at a time. If you need more ideas, a template's available to do as many ideas as you like. Scrivener is available for a download for $40 US. Um, they do allow a 30-day trial. However, I will tell you that that is 30 days of actual use, so it's actually the time that you are using Scrivener. Now, 
if you do not actually type in Scrivener, if you type in a Word document and then save it to Scrivener and use Scrivener only for organization, I will tell you from experience that you could make this 30-day trial last six, seven, or eight months because it is only the actual use that you are using the program. So I suggest that everybody at least try out Scrivener and see if it works for them and see if it makes finding your documentation uh, easier and uh, writing your book simpler. And of course, I will put a link to Scrivener and to Write or Die in the show notes. That's it for this episode. Thank you for watching and hope to see you in about a week or so when I put up the next episode.